Welcome back everyone. In this video, I'm going to walk you through my process for creating this fun morphing animation that I created to celebrate X-Men 97. So let's start by breaking down the different parts of a looping morph animation. This animation is made up of two key poses. The first key pose is the Wolverine illustration, which will then morph into the X-Men text. To make the animation more realistic, I will be adding some anticipation. So in this case, I will have the Wolverine head squashed down before leaping up into an arc motion as it morphs into the second key pose. This step is important as it'll help it make it more of a realistic movement instead of the Wolverine directly morphing into the text. And then in order to create a full loop, I will have to morph the text back into the Wolverine head. So I'll add another anticipation step by having the text rotate clockwise a little before quickly rotating counterclockwise as it morphs back into the first key pose. Now that I have my basic structure down, I will walk you through the steps of my animation process. Step one, start simple. Morphing animations involves a lot of drawing. So when you start out, I strongly recommend keeping your illustrations super simple and limiting your color palette. As you can see here, my Wolverine illustration is very simple and both of the key poses are only using four colors, yellow, blue, black, and pink. Step two, planning out the movement. I always like to create an animation guide to help me figure out the movement. My guide is made up of the path of animation, which is this arc, and tick marks, which will help me plan out the timing of the animation, Tick marks that are closer together will give the animation the appearance of slowing down, while the tick marks that are further apart will make the animation look like it's accelerating. I actually spent a lot of time planning out the tick marks and figuring out how many frames I wanted to use to show the changing of speed. The third step is to sketch the rough animation. For a smoother animation, Start by animating the main action with quick, rough sketches, then add in the details when you're satisfied with the movement. If you start animating all the details right away, you're going to end up losing a lot of time if you have to make corrections later on, and your animation is likely to look kind of rigid. Step 4. Animating the looping morph. Now that my rough sketches are done, I can move on to the detailed animation. Pro tip, you can utilize Procreate Dream's move and scale features to squash, stretch, and warp your illustration so you don't have to completely redraw every frame. For my first few frames of anticipation, I've just duplicated my original illustration group and decreased the vertical scale each time to match my rough sketches. For this frame, I used the warp feature to match my sketch. It's not until I get into the shape becoming more of a blob when I start to actually draw since the shapes have gotten more abstract and are easier to draw. And as I go, it becomes more simple blob shapes. And I use a different trick for the text reveal. As you can see inside of the group, I'm actually using a layer mask applied to a copy of that X-Men text. This allows me to gradually draw in the text. I have also turned off some of the secondary color layers so I can gradually have those fill in as the yellow text takes shape. And I've just stretched out the duration of the second key pose so it holds onto the text before morphing back into Wolverine. And for the second morph, I've used the rotation tool to create the movement. So for the anticipation part, I have just set up keyframes to rotate it clockwise. And then I will have the morphing rotate in the opposite direction. And I have grouped both the text and the Wolverine illustration into one group so they have a consistent rotation and speed. And to add more dynamic movement, I added liquid trails in separate tracks below. To help me draw the trails along the arc of the rotation, I create a new rough guide, which you can see here. 
And since this morphing sequence is shorter than the first one, I keep the trails much shorter as well. And now let's take a look at the full animation. The last thing I did was go into the first key pose group and add a wink animation as an extra touch. To recap, I just walked you through the looping morph animation sequence as well as my four step process for creating the animation. Thanks for watching. Comment down below if you enjoyed this morphing animation tutorial and let me know if there are other topics you'd like me to cover in a future tutorial. Bye for now.